Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how you can make your Blazor applications SEO friendly. So when I say SEO friendly, that means we need to provide proper page title, proper descriptions, keywords, open graph title, Twitter card information, and our metadata tags for the page so that the search engines know what the particular URL belongs to, what kind of content that page page has so that it's easier for it to put it in its page ranking algorithm. So Blazor does provide a component through which we can update the page title and metadata tags, but it does have a problem. And let's first talk about that and then we'll see how we can solve that problem. So if you want to update page title or the head content, then it provides two components. The first component is page title. I'm going to go to my components here. And on the login page, I have added two components. One is blazing chat login, which is a page title. And we have this head content component in which we can add metadata tags. So for login page, I want the description to be Blazing Chat is a Blazor WebAssembly app developed for the community. So that's the description that I want. And if you would like to render this information, then you'll have to use head outlet. I think this was released in .NET 6. So if you go to my server project and go to layout.cshtml, you'll see this head outlet component, which is in layout.cshd1 and all this code is on github you'll find the link of github repo in the video description and this head outlet is server pre-rendered and that's the reason why we should be able to see the page title and metadata tag so if i go to my login page here you'll see that i'm seeing the page title and if i go to my developer console here and look at the elements I do have the page title here, Blazing Chat Login, and I have the metadata tag, which is description, and the same description that we had provided in our login component. But the problem with this is it gets rendered here. But if I look at the page source, you'll see that it's not rendering here. It's giving the pre-render ID for this particular Blazor component but I don't have that content here. And most of the search engine optimization algorithms or you know, these bots, they're going to go through the source of the page, not you know, the elements that you see in your developer console. So how do we get this here and why it is not showing up here? The reason why it's not showing up here is because we have the page title and head content. These are these components which are child component to head outlet. And login razor component is getting rendered through our main component, which is the root component, through our app component, which is you know our root component. So if I go to my host.cshtml here, where I'm mentioning my root component, which is the app component, the render mode is server here. And I want this to be server. The reason why I kept the server is because I'm using a lot of JavaScript calls in my app, especially with custom authentication state provider, where I would like to get the token of my JSON web token so that I can authenticate the user. So I can't really afford to convert my app and its render mode to server pre-rendered. The server pre-rendered renders the application statically first, it sends the HTML to the page, and then it makes that connection with our Blazor server so that it can make that component interactive. So it's kind of heavy component too, so I don't want my app to run as a heavy component. It does help with search engine optimization, but it's a heavy component. So I can't really afford to change my app into a server pre-rendered render mode. So what can we do? So for that, I followed this article on blazerschool.com. This is a great website. If you haven't checked it out, please check it out. 
I'll share this article with you in the video description where they have shown the technique through which we can render our metadata tag. So let's take a look at how they have done it and how I have integrated that in my application. So first thing, I'm going to remove this page title and head content from login tracer component because we are not going to use this anymore. And second, I'm going to go to my server project, which is my Blazor server project. And here I'm going to use this metadata razor component. And we'll talk about that in a moment, but let's go to our layout.cshtml. And instead of using head outlet, I'm going to use metadata razor component here, and I'm going to server pre-render it. Now let's take a look at what metadata razor component is. And in here, there are some things happening, but before I dive into this component, I want to first talk about this metadata transfer service that I'm injecting in my razor component. So let's take a look at this metadata transfer service. There are two things happening in this service. The first thing is it has the service, of course. And the second thing is it has this POCO class, which has some fields. So I have this class metadata value, which has URL, page title, description, open graph title, Twitter card. So these are the information which are related to metadata tags. And you can add more fields in it because there are so many metadata tags that you can use for your page. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to map for each page URL. I want to have that page title. I wanted to have metadata tag description. I wanted to have open graph title, which is for Facebook and a Twitter card so that whenever I share this, share the page in my application on Twitter and Facebook, I get this nice title for my page article. So now that we have this class, we would like to load this information whenever we are injecting this metadata service. So let's look at the constructor of this service. If I go to constructor of the service, you can see that I have this load metadata tag values function here. And if I take a look at that function here, I am literally, you know, adding the URL and what should be the page title and the description for that particular URL in my application. So I have gone through each URL of my application and I've added the title and the description for that URL. You can go through that and you can load this through database if you like, I don't really care. I'm just injecting the service and I'm loading metadata values that I need for my application. So once we have that, what we need to do is whenever we navigate in the application, we would like to update that. We would like to update metadata tag for a particular page. And that's the reason why I'm injecting navigation manager here in the same service. Now, what I'm doing with navigation manager is that whenever the location of the application is changed, I would like to call a method, which is update metadata. And like what the name, you know, it says, it's going to update the metadata. Let's take a look at what it's doing. It's taking the URL, the URL of the application where the application is currently, and it's going to go through our metadata values. It's going to check for particular URL, what should be the metadata values? Like what should be the description? for that page, what should be the title for that page, what should be the open graph title and put a card information for that URL, we are getting that. And we're assigning those values, the title, description, open graph title to record to this metadata service properties. Now, what this is going to do is every time we navigate in the application, it's going to update the properties of metadata service and we need to do something. We need to re-render our component so that the information gets updated. To do that, I'm implementing inotify property changed interface here, which is going to ask me to have this event, which is property changed event. And this is going to get triggered whenever I am updating my property. So each property that I have in the service Whenever I'm setting the value, I'm calling this on property changed event. That's when 
the method is going to get called and we can subscribe other events we can do other things if we can create this event and whenever the properties are getting updated so you can see that for every set method i have this on property changed event defined here and if i go back to my razor component here metadata razor component i am subscribing another function which is on metadata changed event so whenever a property of metadata service changes we would like to call on metadata changed event which is just calling state has changed method which is going to re-render this component this metadata razor component and what do we have in this component is these metadata tags so every time the service property changes we are re-rendering a razor component so that the page can have the latest metadata and that's how this is going to work so whenever i'm disposing this that's when i'm unsubscribing and same thing i'm doing for metadata service too i am implementing i dispose and in the dispose method i'm unsubscribing to our navigation manager location changed event so that you know it's not using the memory and the final thing in program.cs i am adding metadata service as a service so that we can you know that service can get initialized and we can use it so let's run this and see if it works or not with that i'm going to go back to my terminal here and stop the server which was already running and rerun my application again and then i'm going to go back to my page here again reload my page and now you can see that we have page title and if i go to developer tools i also have all the other information too and if i go to my page source you'll see the metadata tag values getting populated for the login page and the page title for it hopefully you can see this and if i go to a different page if i go to profile page you can see that the description is getting changed and the page title is getting changed and you can do that for each page if i log in here and go to contacts page and click on page source here you'll see that this is a contacts page for blazing chat user so this is how you can integrate search engine optimization in your application too like i said the code is on github and before i post this video it will be on github so please take the code from there i know i did not type anything in this video but uh, you can take the code from my github repo if you have any trouble doing this you can ask questions in the comment section below or you can reach out to me on my twitter or facebook handle Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.